USS New Jersey, or BB-62 as she was designated by the U.S. Navy, was the second Iowa-class battleship to be built, and the second ship to be named for the state of New Jersey. She is the most decorated battleship in the history of the United States Navy, having earned 19 battle stars during her career. She saw action in World War II, Korea, Vietnam, and throughout the Cold War, as her career spanned over half of the 20th century. She steamed more miles, fought in more battles, and fired more shells in combat than any other battleship in history. The design of the Iowa class was based somewhat on the preceding South Dakota class. The basic armor scheme from the South Dakota class was already rated to provide protection against 16-inch, 45-caliber projectiles at expected battle ranges, so that armor scheme was applied to a longer hull. The three-turret layout for the main battery remained the same as the preceding North Carolina and South Dakota classes, but the size of the main guns increased from 16-inch, 45-caliber, to 16-inch, 50-caliber, which meant the guns were 80 inches longer and their shells would travel almost a mile further. Propulsion was where New Jersey and her sisters were most improved. Their power plant was designed to be 60% more powerful, which would propel the larger vessels six knots faster than the preceding classes, making the Iowa class the first battleships fast enough to actually keep up with the fast carriers. New Jersey's design would be finalized by the end of 1938, officially ordered on July 1, 1939 and would cost approximately $100 million to build. The keel of New Jersey was laid down on September 16, 1940, at the Philadelphia Naval Yard. When completed, New Jersey would have an overall length of 887 feet and 7 inches, making her the longest U.S. battleship ever built. She had a beam of 108 feet and a full load draft of 37 feet. New Jersey displaced over 45,000 tons, and, when fully loaded with ammunition and stores, she displaced over 57,000 tons. New Jersey's main battery consisted of nine 16-inch, 50-caliber Mark VII guns that were specifically designed for the Iowa class. These, just as in the North Carolina and South Dakota classes, were housed in three turrets located on the center line of the ship, a super-firing pair forward of the superstructure, and one aft. Each barrel could be elevated and fired independently and were capable of hurling a 2,700-pound projectile 23.6 miles. Her secondary battery consisted of 20, 5-inch, 38-caliber, Mark 12 dual-purpose guns located in 10 twin-mount turrets. These were located amidships, five on each side of the ship, and had a range up to 9 miles for surface targets. The planned 1.1-inch, 75-caliber quadruple-mounted Chicago piano guns were replaced during construction by 16 quadruple mounts of 40-millimeter Bofors guns. 49 single mount 20 mm Orlikon auto cannons replaced M2 Browning 50 caliber machine guns that were originally planned. By 1945, eight twin mounted Orlikons replaced some of the single mounts. New Jersey's armor protection is extensive and layered, using both Class A and B armor, along with special treatment steel. She was protected by a main armor belt that was 12.1 inches thick, deck armor up to 6 inches thick and 19.5 inches of armor plating on her gun turrets. Her barbettes were protected by 17.3 inches of armor, and her conning tower had 17.3 inches of armor protection. Her armor was designed to give a zone of immunity against fire from 16-inch, 45-caliber guns, between 18,000 and 30,000 yards. New Jersey's all-or-nothing armor scheme, as well as her torpedo protection, were modeled after the preceding South Dakota class. New Jersey was powered by four Westinghouse-geared double-reduction turbines, each driving one propeller shaft and using steam provided by eight oil-fired Babcock and Wilcox boilers. Rated for 212,000 standard horsepower, her turbines produced a top speed of 33 knots at normal displacement. She had a cruising range of over 15,000 nautical miles at a speed of 17 knots. New Jersey had an SK air search radar installed and fitted to the mainmast, and a SG surface search radar set located on the forward fire control tower. Late in World War II, she would receive an updated SK-2 set. She had a pair of Mark 38 gun directors with Mark 8 fire control radars to direct her main battery, and four Mark 37 fire control directors with Mark 12 fire control radars to direct her secondary battery. These systems were upgraded over time with the Mark 13 replacing the Mark 8 and the Mark 25 replacing the Mark 12. 
but they remained the cornerstones of her combat radar systems during her entire career. When commissioned, New Jersey was equipped with two aircraft catapults located on her fantail. She initially carried the Vado S-2 U King Fisher and then the Curtis S-C Seahawk, both of which were employed to spot the fall of shot for her main gun batteries, and in a secondary capacity, perform search and rescue missions for downed U.S. aviators. New Jersey was designed to have a crew complement of 117 officers and 1,804 enlisted personnel. During World War II, due to her increased anti-aircraft armament, her crew complement eventually peaked at over 2,700. By the 1980s, new technology enabled a crew of as few as 1,600 to operate her. New Jersey was launched on December 7, 1942, and was commissioned into the fleet on May 23, 1943. She completed her fitting out period and shakedown cruise by mid September, then headed for Casco Bay, Maine in mid October. She would be stationed there until mid December, in the event the German battleship Tirpitz attempted to leave Norway and raid the North Atlantic convoys. In mid December, due to the Tirpitz being damaged in a raid by the Royal Navy and her presence in the North Atlantic no longer needed, New Jersey headed back to the Philadelphia Navy Yard, where she would receive four more quadruple 40 mm mounts. On January 2, 1944, New Jersey and her sister Iowa, along with their escorts, got underway for the Pacific, arriving in the Ellis Islands on the 22nd. Three days later, she rendezvoused with Task Group 58.2 of the newly formed Fast Carrier Task Force for the attack on the Marshall Islands. New Jersey would screen the carriers of her task group as they conducted strikes against Kwajalein and Eniwetok between January 29th and February 2nd softening up the ladder for its invasion and supporting the troops who landed on January 31st. On February 4, 1944, New Jersey became the flagship of Admiral Raymond A. Spruance, commander of the U.S. Fifth Fleet. Spruance, who was raised in New Jersey, led American forces to victory in the Battle of Midway in 1942. On February 11th, New Jersey, along with Task Force 58, got underway for the attack on Truck Atoll on February 17th and 18th. Most of the Japanese fleet had already fled by then, but carrier planes pounded the atoll and the remaining ships in its lagoon. New Jersey got into the action when she engaged Japanese vessels attempting to escape through the north pass of the lagoon. After the New Jersey's float plane spotted fleeing Japanese ships 25 miles away, she raced towards them at over 30 knots. Her 5-inch guns sank the minesweeper, Shonen Maru, and then she finished off the destroyer Maikaze with her main battery. She then straddled the destroyer Nawaki with her main battery at around 35,700 yards, or 21.3 miles. This would be the first time Iowa-class battleships performed their primary function of engaging enemy warships, and unfortunately, it would also be the last. Between March 17th and April 10th, New Jersey protected the carriers as they conducted strikes on various Japanese bases. Admiral Spruance transferred his flag to the heavy cruiser Indianapolis on April 10th. New Jersey then supported amphibious landings in New Guinea in mid-April and bombarded truck later in the month. Her 16-inch salvos pounded Ponape in the Caroline Islands on May 1st, destroying fuel tanks, badly damaging the airfield, and demolishing a headquarters building. On June 6th, she got underway for operations in the Marianas, which included shelling Saipan and Tinian on the 12th in preparation for amphibious landings by the Marines there on June 15th. New Jersey would participate in the Battle of the Philippine Sea on June 19th and 20th as part of Vice Admiral Willis Lee's battle line, designated Task Group 58.7, and containing all seven of the new fast battleships that were currently part of Task Force 58. This group was positioned 15 miles west of the carriers, between them and the most probable approach of the enemy, to protect from any surface threat, and also in case Japanese surface units attempted an end run at the invasion beaches. Neither of these scenarios materialized, and instead, the task group saw action as Japanese planes, which managed to get through the vectored fighter interceptors, mainly attacked the heavily armored battle line. New Jersey helped shoot down three of the attacking aircraft. The battle line fulfilled its role by downing most of the attackers with a wall of impenetrable anti-aircraft fire. As one observer stated, the battleships, cruisers, and destroyers put up a tremendous barrage which, together with burning planes all around the horizon, created the most awesome spectacle. Survivors were few, and New Jersey would make it through the battle unscathed.
New Jersey arrived in Pearl Harbor on August 9th, and on August 24th, became the flagship of the U.S. Third Fleet, as Admiral William F. Halsey came aboard, and Fifth Fleet became Third Fleet. She got underway the same day and rejoined the Fast Carrier Task Force on September 8th. During the rest of the month, Third Fleet would conduct strikes in the Philippines and support amphibious landings in the Palau Islands. In early October, the fleet would conduct massive strikes on the Ryukyu Islands, Okinawa, and Formosa. From October 23rd through the 26th, New Jersey participated in the Battle of Leyte Gulf. Planes from her task group hammered the Japanese center force hard on the 24th, sinking the Japanese battleship Musashi. The Japanese retreated, or so Halsey thought, and he ordered all of his task forces north to deal with the Japanese carriers. But this was a decoy force meant to lure Third Fleet away from the Leyte Gulf area, so that the center and southern forces could converge on the invasion beaches and annihilate the American units there. New Jersey had been assigned to Task Force 34, along with Iowa, Washington, and Alabama, to guard against the approach of the Center Force through the San Bernardino Strait. But Task Force 34 had not been detached from Halsey's other forces, and instead, the battleships made their way north with Third Fleet's carriers. As the carriers struck the northern force, Halsey ordered Task Force 34 to form up, but not to guard San Bernardino Strait. But instead, to steam north ahead of the fast carriers and shell any Japanese ships that survived the airstrikes. At 11.15, when New Jersey and her cohorts were only 42 miles from the northern carrier force, she and the rest of Task Force 34 reversed course and headed south to deal with the center force. By that time, however, Task Force 34 was so far away that it could not get there in time due to the slower speed of its older battleships. At 17.01, Admiral Halsey ordered the fastest part of Task Force 34, New Jersey, Iowa, three light cruisers, and eight destroyers, to race ahead at 30 knots and force the Japanese into a night action. However, before Task Force 34.5 could reach San Bernardino Strait, the Japanese had escaped into it. The rest of October and November were spent off the Philippines providing support for the troops ashore and combating a new threat, the kamikaze. On October 29th, New Jersey shot down a kamikaze, who nonetheless managed to crash into the carrier Intrepid. On November 25th, New Jersey shot down six kamikazes and damaged several others. On November 27th, New Jersey returned to Ulithi. Since leaving Pearl Harbor in August, she had been at sea for 85 of 95 days, engaged in near-constant fighting, and steamed 36,185 miles. December would see more strikes in the Philippines to support efforts there, and December 17th through the 18th, New Jersey, along with the rest of Third Fleet, would deal with Typhoon Cobra. Admiral Nimitz would spend Christmas 1944 aboard New Jersey, marking the first time ever that a five-star admiral's flag was raised over a Navy warship. New Jersey supported more landings in the Philippines in January, and then the fleet headed into the South China Sea to harass Japanese interests there. Admiral Spruance raised his flag on New Jersey on February 10, 1945, and Third Fleet reverted back to Fifth Fleet and got underway for operations in the Bonin Islands in support of the invasion of Iwo Jima. On February 16th and 17th, the fleet attacked the Japanese home islands, and New Jersey found herself only 60 miles off the coast of Japan. Much of late February and early March were spent conducting airstrikes on the home islands and Okinawa. On March 19th, the New Jersey shot down about a half-dozen aircraft attacking the carriers, damaged some others, and her floatplane rescued a downed carrier pilot. On March 24th, she bombarded Okinawa in preparation for the April 1st invasion. On April 2nd, the destroyer Franks, changing its patrol station during a stormy night, crossed in front of New Jersey. Through emergency maneuvers, New Jersey managed to avoid cutting the destroyer in half, but still sideswiped her in a shower of sparks. Franks was severely damaged and her captain was killed by the battleship's anchor. New Jersey sustained minor damage and continued escorting her carriers. New Jersey and the rest of Fifth Fleet weathered the most powerful kamikaze attacks of the war on April 6th and 7th, as over 355 kamikazes and 340 other planes attacked the fleet. 185 kamikazes and 100 or more other planes attacked on April 11th and 12th. On April 15th, New Jersey held a memorial service for President Franklin Roosevelt, who had died three days before. The next day, the New Jersey headed for Ulithi, then Pearl Harbor, and then the Puget Sound Naval Yard for a much-needed overhaul. 
Here, her unique round bridge was replaced by the same squared-off bridge that had been installed on Missouri and Wisconsin during their construction and on Iowa during a refit. She received a more substantial tripod mainmast in place of her previous pole mast, allowing her to handle more radar and radio antennas. Some of her single-barreled 20mm Ehrlichons were replaced by twin-barreled Ehrlichons. After her overhaul, she would shell Wake Island on August 8th and rejoin the fleet on the 14th, once again becoming Admiral Spruance's flagship. New Jersey carried him to Manila on August 20th, where he conferred with General MacArthur about the upcoming occupation of Japan. On August 30th, New Jersey brought Spruance to Okinawa, where he and 5th Fleet kept a watchful eye on Japanese forces until their surrender aboard Missouri on September 2nd. New Jersey arrived in Tokyo Bay on September 17th and was the first flagship for the occupation of Japan. On January 28, 1946, New Jersey yielded her role as flagship of the 5th Fleet to her sister Iowa. The next day, she set sail for home. Taking part in Operation Magic Carpet, she carried nearly 1,000 American troops home, sailing under the Golden Gate Bridge on February 10th. After operations on the West Coast and an overhaul at Puget Sound, New Jersey was transferred to the Atlantic in 1947. She would conduct midshipman cruises and serve as the flagship of Battleship Division I until 1948, when she was decommissioned and assigned to the Atlantic Reserve Fleet. With the outbreak of the Korean War in 1950, New Jersey would be called back into service. She was recommissioned on November 21, 1950, and began preparing for war. Her catapults were removed to make room for helicopters to land. Her remaining single-mount Ehrlichons were removed and replaced by eight more dual mounts. She sailed from Norfolk, Virginia on April 16, 1951, and arrived off the coast and conducted her first shore bombardment on May 19. Two days later at Wonsan, she received her only combat casualties of the Korean War. Seaman Robert Osterwin was killed and two men were severely wounded by shrapnel when she took a hit from a shore battery on her number one turret and received a near-miss aft to port. He was New Jersey's only crew member to ever be killed in action. During her two tours of duty in Korean waters, she used her guns to interdict supply and communication routes and destroy supplies and troop positions. New Jersey used her 16-inch guns to fire far beyond the capacity of land artillery, moved rapidly and free from major attack from one target to another and at the same time could be immediately available to guard aircraft carriers should they require protection. After coming home in 1953, New Jersey would once again operate along the East Coast and in the Caribbean conducting midshipman cruises during the summers and training the rest of the year. On December 14, 1956, she arrived in New York for inactivation. She was decommissioned and once again placed in reserve fleet in 1957. Due to heavy loss rates of U.S. aircraft over Vietnam, New Jersey was called back into service in 1967 to provide fire support. She was selected due to being in better condition than her sisters, having received an extensive overhaul prior to decommissioning in 1957. Upon her reactivation, she underwent a period of modernization during which her 20 and 40 millimeter guns were removed, and she received improved electronic warfare systems and radar. She was formally recommissioned on April 6, 1968, and headed for the gun line and the waters off Vietnam. Here she would provide support with her 16-inch and 5-inch guns by interdicting supply and communication routes and destroying supplies and troop positions. During the battleship's tour of duty along the gun line in Vietnam, she had fired 5,688 rounds of 16-inch shells and 14,891 rounds of 5-inch shells. On December 17, 1969, New Jersey would once again be decommissioned and placed in the reserve fleet. On December 28, 1982, New Jersey was recommissioned as part of President Ronald Reagan's effort to create a 600-ship navy. During her modernization, she had four of her five-inch turrets removed, received weapons upgrades, including various missile systems and phalanx guns, upgrades to radar and fire control systems, and improved electronic warfare capabilities. Over the next several years, she would provide fire support during various conflicts and showcase U.S. power around the world. Her final cruise began in 1989, and she returned to the U.S. in February 1990, being decommissioned for the final time on January 8, 1991. She was placed in the Pacific Reserve Fleet until January 1999. On September 12, she was towed from Bremerton, Washington, to Philadelphia for restoration work in the Philadelphia Naval Shipyard in advance of her planned donation for use as a museum ship. This work was completed, and on September 23, 2001, 
New Jersey was towed to her final resting place on the Camden waterfront. In 2004, New Jersey was added to the National Register of Historic Places and the New Jersey Register of Historic Places. She has been designated as the State Ship of New Jersey and is a member of the International Historic Naval Ship Association. The Battleship New Jersey Museum and Memorial is a living museum with veterans and staff that educate thousands of guests every year. Much of the ship is still in its original 1943 condition, and other areas showcase the upgraded weapons and electronics installed in 1982. Key items of equipment still operate, including sighting devices for the main battery, the three portside 5-inch batteries, the analog targeting computer, and missile firing displays. The shell hoist, several radio rooms, main radar antenna, and systems in the Combat Information Center have also been reactivated. New Jersey is dedicated as a national memorial to her crews and other Americans who served over her five decades of service. New Jersey, which served longer and with greater distinction than any other battleship, now serves as an unparalleled museum and memorial for all of America's major conflicts from 1943 to 1990. She provided firepower for freedom and is now a monument to freedom for all. Thank you for watching. And if you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button, comment, and subscribe so that we can bring you more insightful content just like this.